Well, hello there, my lovely listeners. It is time to talk all things feng shui and get some astrology answers for the month of October. I'm Chipro Sam, I'm in your house, and I want to give you a heads up because this month is very unique. It has a specific interaction with the year of 2024. And I got to be honest, it ain't going to be easy, folks. It ain't going to be easy. I just want to give people a place to go to get information. I want them to enjoy learning about qi and how it's easy to learn about it and affect change in your own life. So Qi Pro is here for the curious seekers and for the professionals looking to get ahead. This is the bottom line. I want to empower people with information because the one thing that can't be taken from you is your knowledge. And there we have it. The one thing that can't be taken away from you is your knowledge. Hold on to your hats, peeps. This month is going to chop and change without warning and attempt to overload us in every way. So October began on the 8th. And I say that because I'm a little bit late recording this and I'm going to hold my hand up there. Just been a tad busy with things. And it's something called Jia Shu. Jia Zhu is Jia is Yang Wood. Shu is dog. So this dog month, um, Jia Shu is not a light configuration in metaphysics, even by itself. Okay, and it's best you understand that what's about to occur, otherwise you will be knocked sideways. So what are the kind of things you're going to see this month? Well, you're going to kind of see who's got the loudest bark and sharpest bite. But we'll also see, see some people with a really loud bark that cannot actually back it up with a sharp bite. The question will be, are they bluffing and will you fall for the bluff? Yeah. It's going to be tricky because we're going to go head to head with things. The annual dragon and the monthly dog these two literally headbutt each other and they don't see eye to eye. Now, I'm not overly worried about that in some respects because I actually like it when things come to a head because sometimes you've actually got to knock two heads together and say, for God's sake, see sense. And there's a bit of that happening this month. So what I'm watching already in my own life is I was a little bit nervous about this coming up because it has an interaction in my chart. And, and I was like, oh my God, I just don't think I can take any more change and something. And then I realized I was looking at it the wrong way. And you may be too. You know, I'm a big believer that sometimes you've got to break something apart to build it better. It's like I grew up in England. So we have these chocolate Easter eggs at Easter time. And you have to smash the chocolate Easter egg with a little toy hammer to uh, get the wonderful little chocolates inside. Right. So you have to break something to get to the good stuff. Well, that's kind of where we are here. Now, the dragon and the dog are considered storage animals, often called graveyard animals. Now, keep in mind, these are just terms, they're names, they're titles. They don't mean things are going to go to the graveyard. Storage is the best word I like to use here. And they are intense, deep, heavy and dark. OK, when something's in storage, it's not light and bright and airy. It's hidden away, dark and heavy. So it's not exactly a Disney movie this month unless you're into the thrillers with a slight horror inflection. Now, why am I painting such a negative picture? Well, I'm kind of not, but I know some of you are going to hear that last bit I just said and think, what the heck? Well, because it's me and I want you to be prepared and I want you to see when a challenge comes up, how you can use it positively, how you can meet it head on, maybe break something apart, maybe crack it, pull it apart, whatever, whatever terminology you want to use and actually get to the nitty gritty so you can go ahead. So primarily we have the positioning, if we look at the global picture of powerful people going head to head, that's what we're going to see on the big stage. We've also got the political arena, right? We've got the global wars. We've got so many things coming to a head this month. We're intensely charged this month and it will be a full on hit every side. But again, let's not panic about that and see that as a scary thing. Let's see it as let's get the shit on the table. Let's look at the actual facts and let's make decisions and let's go. Now, environmentally, not a great month. We've already seen this. It's already kicked off really intensely. And this is the dog and the dragon going at it. So if you're listening to me for the first time and you're thinking, well, I don't really believe in feng shui and I don't really believe in Chinese astrology, you don't need to. You don't need to believe in any of it. It's occurring around you anyway, whether you like it or not. What is occurring with the earth, with the um, all the worlds, the planets and everything is actually occurring. We're just along for the ride. So environmentally, all this earth is kind of too much and the actual ground will break and create cracks under intense pressure and storms can surge. 
So again, that looks a bit like, a, oh my God, we're going to have earthquakes because Sam said the earth is going to break apart and we're going to have massive storms. Well, probably, yes. However, when when you, like I I live in a place, to give you an example, I live in a place where we often get little earthquakes and I've felt a few lately, but I'm not actually scared about them because when you have a small little earthquake, it's releasing pressure from underneath the ground. We want that to happen because if we release pressure along the way, we don't have an explosion. Storm surging, well, we can't really stop them, right? They're going to happen, but we, what we can do is be prepared and have actions ready so we can handle it. You can never outdo the environment, okay? It's going to do what it's going to do. We're just best to be prepared for it. So remember, keep in mind that when pressure creates cracks, theoretical steam is released and that can create openings for improvement eventually. So we just need, we just need to get through the cracks appearing first. There's a, I'm, I'm not going to be able to say this properly, but the, I remember hearing a lovely story about when a teacup um, breaks. I think it's in China, could be Japan, I'm not sure, and how they glue it back together. Well, not glue, they use a special gold to put it back together. But sometimes um, there are gaps or just the fact that this gold fills in the cracks where the teacup was broken and it becomes the feature. So we might think, well, the teacup was perfect before and it broke and, you know, we've put it back together. Now you see these lines where it was joined. Well, those lines are the beauty. So the cracks that appear in your world this month, the cracks that appear in your life this month, how about you look at them as something quite beautiful? How about you look at them as a new way? Because what you had before wasn't working. You may not have realized that, but I'm here to remind you that it probably wasn't working. So you need things to break and focus on the cracks as a positive because they're creating light for a new way forward. Now, what I will say this month, and it was so funny because I had written this blog a while ago. I just haven't got to record it for you yet. And I was at work the other day and someone said, oh, da 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 that person needs to stay in their lane. And I almost fell over sort of laughing, but it would have been very inappropriate to do that. So I didn't do it. But they said that and I thought, oh my God, that's what I just wrote on my blog. Um, I used this tagline for all of 2023, I think it was, when that was my sort of theme for the year, stay in your lane. Well, it's back this month, okay? Stay in your lane. Why would I say that? Because what's about to occur this month, you have no control over. Politics will go wild. The earth will literally move beneath our feet. Situations will implode and explode. So keep out of it and focus on you, your immediate needs and the needs of those around you. It's not a burying your head in the sand month. I'm not trying to say, oh, pretend everything's okay. I'm trying to explain or share with you that some things will occur this month that you have no control over. So don't worry about them in the sense because you cannot, you cannot do anything. Your worry will not do anything except upset you and maybe little ones with you or people around you who depend on you. The earth is going to do what it's going to do this month. So you just take care of you and focus on your needs. And then when those are taken care of, then you can ripple your care out to other people. Now, there's a couple of things I do want you to avoid this month. Um, I would say avoid the news, but you can't. And I, and I don't think you should completely, but I'm going to say temper it. I'm, that's always my voice on, on news and social media. Be careful what you consume because it will affect you. So with elections pretty much everywhere, environmental disasters already underway, you have to stay informed. I get that. Of course you do. But please keep a lid on it. Protect your emotional well-being and focus on your direct world around you. Like any month, this one shall pass and it's the dragon being pushed by a determined dog that's causing this. Now we're not done with 2024 for a few months yet, but the dragon is starting to feel that the power is going to shift and dragons do not relinquish power easily. Think Game of Thrones, seriously. So the dog is the first one that's coming up to step up and sort of say, hey, bud, you're on your way out. The lineup's about to change and I'm challenging you directly. And the dragon doesn't really like that. So yes, I'm being a bit cheeky with dragons and dogs, but this is the underlying energy that you're seeing in wars, in politics, in everything. We are about to change the lineup on many fronts. Thank God. 
And if you're not a believer in such energetic showdowns, well, I, I guess I'm going to say why you're here listening to me, because this is what I talk about. This is occurring. This is activating. And ultimately, these catastrophes will create growth. Okay? So through the issues that will occur this month, we will create growth. And growth is what we need. It's kind of, we can call it change as well, right? But people get scared with the word change and they really shouldn't be. Change is good. It's the one thing we can count on for changing, right? The problem is it's very uncomfortable during the process of change. But if nothing changes, nothing changes. 2025 snake, the, the, the animal that leads the year of 2025 is a very different type of energy. Now, the snake is not entering right now. That's not what's occurring. But right now, the dragon's being slightly challenged with his position of power. And the snake is getting ready to come in. And that's a whole different conversation for another day. I have to focus on that differently. But what I want you to know is there's a power play metaphysically, which is going to play out environmentally and politically and global war-wise. So kind of get the popcorn and watch how things go down. Now for the here and now, know that things are going to break apart somewhat spectacularly. It's okay. They have to. All right. I want to move into some feng shui and then I want to talk about astrology because you know I like to cover all of these things for you. So how do you max the feng shui of your home this October? Well, keep in mind that your home has an actual feng shui chart. It's like a DNA code. And I don't know that code unless you are my client and we're talking specifics. But here, I don't know your, your home's feng shui chart. What I can give you, what I'm sharing with you here, is what the generic month chart of October is. And the most important takeaway that I want you to have here is to, is to think of feng shui as Wi-Fi. It's energy Wi-Fi and you tap into it. So this month, I'm going to tell you where the Wi-Fi is strong for good outcomes, and I'm going to tell you where the Wi-Fi is weak, so avoid it. It's like trying to stream family movie night, and you decide for some reason you want to go do family movie night in the spare bedroom upstairs, and the Wi-Fi is really weak, and the movie just keeps stopping and starting and stopping and starting. It's not a fun experience, is it, right? You know the Wi-Fi is weak there, so why the heck did you plan movie night there? Plan movie night where the Wi-Fi is strong. Feng Shui is the same. So each month, there are areas that you can use and areas I'd like you not to use within reason, okay? Within reason. So our first beneficial area is the Southwest. This is a very assertive area for activating your career, your career goals. So I want you to think of this like you, maybe you want to go for a promotion, maybe you want to change careers completely, maybe you're just rethinking your whole career. Use the Southwest to actually think about it. Tap into the energy to help encourage your mind to think in different ways about your career. You could make notes there. You could make write emails there. You could make phone calls from there. Okay. Second area that I really like is the East. This is great, a great area for studying. Okay. For advancing ideas, for thinking things through. So it's really good for that. It's got an educative, academic Wi-Fi this month. Okay, two problematic areas. Well, the Southeast. If you want to end something, this is your place and time to do it. Negative energy that will cause destruction is here. So avoid it if you don't want that. Use it if you do. So you might be thinking, well, how the heck do I use that, Sam? You told me to avoid the area and now you're telling me to use it. Okay, stick with me. Let me explain here. The Southeast has an energy that really wants to break something apart. So if you're in a situation where you're having difficulty separating from something, have the conversation with that person, whether it's phone or person in the Southeast, because the energy there is destructive. Now, you've got to be ready for that. It's not a positive thing. I don't like mere mortals to use energy like this normally. But if you need to do this, if you need a little bit of a boost to break something apart, use the Southeast. The Northwest is my next area I want you to be careful of because this is an argumentative area this month. So avoid this area for important discussions and major interactions as the pushback that you will get 
will be intense and it will go sideways very bloody fast. So don't have important conversations there. Now, I get that you may not be able to avoid an area I speak to or possibly even use one just because of the way of your, your home, your condo, your apartment. I get that 100%. I'm a very practical person. I'm giving you pointers to see if you can use them. Do the best you can. Okay, let's move into astrology for October. Now, if you haven't got your Chinese astrology chart, just head to cheaprosam.com and click on the calculators and you're going to see um, several ways of creating your birth chart. Just do the Bartzer or the Daymaster calculator and it will give you the animals and elements in the year, month, day and hour of your chart. So get that first, so pause this for a second, go get your chart, take a screen grab, take a picture, come back. All right, so let's proceed. Do you have a dog in your birth chart? Anywhere, month, day, year, hour, whatever. Okay, so the dog is clashed this October. The dog and the dragon directly go head to head. So they're opposites. So it could be a heavy month because it's a bit of a head to head. You may be pushed, you may be annoyed, you may be frustrated and overwhelmed at times. Know this can be for the greater good as what breaks apart now creates space for something new. Don't fight what shows itself this month go with it. One of my favorite sayings that I've been sort of using a lot is run towards the pain, run towards the fear. So if something is going, is occurring in your month, or you know, you think something's coming up and you're a little bit scared of it, you don't want to deal with it, you want to back away from it, this is the month to actually turn towards it. Um, I mean, I'm kind of always going to say that, I'm going to encourage you to, to grow through the pain, but turn towards it and face it because then you'll see it's not the issue you thought it was. So when we have a clash, I actually like it in this situation in the astrology because I believe it creates change and change is good. So don't fight it. Let this happen. Okay, uh, let's continue. Do you have a rooster in your chart this month? Well, it's always interesting because this is a bit of a harm and sometimes that can mean an actual harm, but it could be, this one could be more emotionally driven. So buckle up and don't take things personally, okay? Take the time to send to yourself and focus on your needs because I don't want you to overextend yourself for other people. But more importantly, I don't want you to take things personally. It probably isn't and yet you think it is. Um, so let's say you're a barista in a coffee shop and someone's complaining about the coffee. You made it too hot. You made it too weak. You, you made it wrong. Okay. They're not actually complaining at you, even though they kind of are, they're complaining about the coffee. So just make them another one, right? Just don't worry about it. Like if something happened, like just say, okay, that didn't work. Let me do it again. Now, do you have an ox in your birth chart? So <laughs> this one's good. Um, this is a bit of a three-way. Uh, so you might think, oh, that, that sounds good because the dog, the ox, and the dragon create a three-way. Now, <laughs> they all reunite to have a bit of a powwow. Now, the problem with this powwow is that the mindsets of these three are pretty intense. It's a little bit of a bullying situation, a destructive situation. It's a bit of a mess and it can be a little bit unsettling. So what I want you to do is pull back and view things from a distance so you understand what's really occurring before you make any big decisions. It's kind of hard way to ex it's kind of hard to explain this one and I know I was cheeky with the whole three way, but it's it's a three way that you don't want. I mean <laughs> If you ever do want a three-way, that's your call. But um, just be aware of that if you have an ox in your chart because this is going to activate and you might feel things are unfair and it's not in your favor and you're being bullied or backed into a corner and you might be. So like I said, pull back, give some space and know that the month will end and it may not be what you think it is. What it is is you could get caught up in what's going on around the world, around you, in your environment and in the world and in a bigger picture. So it's not actually about you, okay? Now let's have a look. Uh, do you have a goat in your chart? So this is a, dr a direct destruction. Now I have a goat in my chart and as this came forward, I'm like, I'm not so keen on this. But then I realized, okay, because I like to look at things for me and think, okay, how am I viewing this? So how might you view this when I when I share it with you? So 
Everything's about to break apart. And at first, at first, this will feel overwhelming. It'll feel wrong. It's totally uncalled for. But is it? Have you been avoiding some issues which have bubbled under the surface and now are rising through the cracks to the surface? The answer is yes, by the way. So take a step back and welcome the disruption that is occurring for you right now and make space for a new way forward. Now, I'm going to give you an example here. So one of the reasons this one of the reasons this podcast is late being recorded is because I ch decided to change something in my business this month of October. It was something I was providing a service and I thought, you know what, I, I cannot I cannot give everything what everybody what they need with everything I'm doing. You know, there's feng shui, real estate moves people are making. I've got to answer those questions. There's business moves people are making. Astrology, we're getting ready for all the annual updates for 2025. And I had a subscription and I decided that I couldn't really give every, my best. I, I was just getting stretched too thin, so I was going to change something. So I decided to stop it. So because of that, I wanted to refund people who had already bought it. So I did that. I went into my systems. I talked with my tech crew. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, just go ahead, Sam, and go do that. So off I go, merrily on my way, refunding a lot of people. And I felt so happy, and this is all good. I wake up the next morning to emails telling me that, no, no, people are annoyed. Why have I just charged them extra money? And I'm like, what? That's not what I did. All I had to do was take a step back. The systems were all working through the processes. All refunds were processed. But, Im but immediately, the first thing that came up was it was all wrong. Everything had been done wrong. It was falling apart. People wouldn't get angry. And I was so worried. Oh, my God, people are going to get so upset because they're going to think I've done this wrong and I've charged them. And that's exactly what happened. It was a very destructive few days. And I had to pull back. And, you know, so the first 24 hours, I was not a happy camper. I was very upset that people could be unhappy. And that just really bothered me. And then I pulled back and I realized, whoa, 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 hang on. This is all occurring for me to reshape this and rebuild it. And I absolutely got through it. So if I can get through that, and trust me, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of money. It's all sorted. It's all wonderfully sorted and it's all beautiful and moving forward. So know that. Know that I dealt with something that wasn't great and I came through it. Now, last animal we're going to talk about is a rabbit. Do you have a rabbit? in your birth chart. Well, bully for you, aren't you the lucky one? So <laughs> this month, it's a secret combination for you, which means people are going to come to help you. You've got collaborations around you. You've got the ability for someone to give you a leg up to get you where you want to go. It's a wonderful thing when a, when a combination comes forward. So use that this month, which means if you need help, ask for it because it's going to be there. Okay, I'm going to close off now and I want to give you just a couple of things about how to be successful this October. Ready? In a nutshell, the best thing you can do is to stay in your lane and stay flexible. The month is heavy in itself, so don't add to that with a stubborn stance led with unrealistic expectations. Everything will come to a head this month and that overwhelming feel will be strong prodding you in the wee hours of the night and muddying your thoughts. Remove yourself from all turmoil, especially that which does not involve you. Stay in your own lane, remember? Keep your nose clean. Stay out of other people's business because that's how you navigate October. And I believe in you. If I could make it through the first few days, you can too, okay? You can do this. And remember, if you're looking for your personal astrology forecast, go to cheaprosam.com. I've opened up the annual forecast registrations for 2025. So you might want to get on my list and get that going. Alrighty, until next time, peeps. Until next time.